Harkons are a race of outsiders from heaven, creatures of fundamental law and good, tasked with the protections of that plane, as well as all those who are innocent or free of evil. They are natural enemies of devils, daemons and demons, and most are veterans of many attacks against their home by the fiends of the lower planes. The natives of heaven arise from amid the earth and clouds of that divine realm, inspired into creation by the sacred mountain's metaphysical processes, the faith of goodly mortals, and the transformation of virtuous spirits. Each Archon begins life as a Lantern Archon, or a lesser servant to spirit, gaining in power and prestige through aising the cause of good, watched over by benevolent mentors and captains of the divine orders. Each spirit is encouraged and aided in indulging its fundamental desire to see peace, honesty, and fairness spread across all lands, especially throughout the material plane. To this end, Archons of all walk often and take the roles of questing knights, journeying throughout disparate worlds and realms, aiding in good works and promoting courageous acts. These virtuous outsiders prefer to motivate mortals to act with honour and integrity rather than righting moral wrongs themselves. Believing the cause of righteousness is best served by enlightening creatures to make just choices and cast off their own shackles of evil. This makes future temptations easier to resist and plants the seed of spiritual deliverance. Thus, most Archons take a subtle hand in their interaction with mortals taking special pleasure in bringing solace and reprieve to those who are wholly unaware of their presence. The efforts of heaven prove far less subtle when it comes to the combating of the hordes of the lower plains. Armies of Archons stand in staunch opposition to the affronts of Hell, Abaddon, and the Abyss. Confronting them upon extraplanar battlefields and the material plane itself, these encounters might take them from vast armies clashing over strange planar holdings, or solitary archons revealing themselves upon mortal worlds to push back the machinations of fiendish invaders. In such cases, archons generally prefer to meet the foes head-on, if it's prudent to do so. But, if outmatched, they do what they can to even the odds, usually by employing hit-and-run tactics, or standoffs and engaging a foe with magic before moving into melee. Because they can teleport at will, it's easy for them to vanish and reappear later, often with reinforcements, and with the tactical advantage of surprise. These warriors of law act honorably, even to their foes, but they are not foolish or without passion, and little in the multiverse dares stand against the rage of heaven. Although Archons are champions of good, they have little patience for those who do not follow the strict traditions and patterns of goodness. While a cruel dictatorship might be a legitimate enemy of an Archon, rebellion and a riot is not the proper way to address such inequality. Justice and law must not be abandoned in the constant struggle for peace and good. For in such anarchic actions, one often promotes further harm and mayhem, even if unintentionally. The laws of heaven exist to minimize collateral damage and unwanted pain, and while adhering to these laws often results in longer campaigns, Archons point out their victories are lasting triumphs as a result. Because of this strong adherence to tradition and law, Archons often find themselves the unwilling enemies of chaotic good creatures, particularly the Azatas. To an Archon, an Azata's nature seems whimsical and impatient, in striking swiftly against an enemy without bothering to think through the implications of their sudden act, it is possible to do more harm than good. Still, while opposing the chaos of an Azata is a necessary step, the Archon takes no pleasure in such opposition, and it does its best to minimize against the length of such a conflict. Unfortunately, the capricious and emotional Azatas are legendary among the Archons for their ability to hold grudges. So for many Archons, the best policy with interacting with the Azata is to be brief, succinct, and firm. Hound Archon This canine-headed humanoid's well-groomed appearance and polished greatsword show it to be more than a common beast. Hound Archons look like well-muscled humans, with canine heads typically resembling those of noble-looking wolves or dogs. 
Well trained, they prefer to make use of their great sword in battle, though they are equally adept with the use of their natural weapons. Hound Arkans loathe killing mortals and prefer to disarm or incapacitate even evil individuals when they can. Against fiends and the irredeemably corrupt, though, they show no mercy. Hound Arkans make disciplined soldiers and sentinels. Occasionally good aligned deities send them to watch over specific places and individuals they take a particular interest in. This usually occurs under the guise of an unassuming but friendly stray dog. Such secret defenders might follow their ward or guard their posts subtly for years. In Heaven's armies, exceptional Hound Arkan paladins lead their fellows into combat, taking on roles as captains and knights. They lead incursions against fiendish holdings, whether that entails strikes against demonic fortresses or liberating the captives of night hag soul collectors. Such missions make a Hound Archon perhaps the most likely celestial one might encounter upon the lower plains, and packs of swift moving wolves occasionally reveal themselves to be the welcome saviors of those lost within such realms. Regardless of their orders, Hound Archons universally exhibit a particular hatred of canine fiends, abandoning all mercy and going out of their way to put an end to the evil of Bargusts, Glabrizus, Yeth Hounds, and similar depraved outsiders. Lantern Archon Shedding a warm and calming radiance, this orb of light moves with a supernatural silence and an otherworldly grace. Friendly and curious beings, Lantern Archons eagerly converse and assist other creatures. Their bodies, however, are merely globes of spiritual purity and pale light, and although they might interact with their surroundings through a pure force of will, such interaction proves too weak to help with most physical tasks. Their evasive natures make them exceptional at scouting, at least in areas where strange lights aren't unusual. Relaying messages and overwhelming enemies with surprise and group tactics, although they appear fragile, their forms guard against all but the most profane attacks. A Lantern Archon always glows, usually as bright as a torch. They have total control over the colour of the light that they shed, and take great pleasure in modulating their colours and brightness in time to music or to entertain other creatures. Most Lantern Archons speak in airy, echoing voices, with tones that range from somber whispers to hurried chirping. Often, their light fluctuates along with their words or tones, punctuating their speech with sparks of light and gentle pulses. A lantern archon can quickly dim its light to that of a candle, but only death can extinguish this light. As lantern archons never sleep or eat, they make excellent watchers or guardians. Lantern Archons light many settlements in the celestial realms in lieu of mundane or magical illumination, serving as distinguished sentinels, always watchful for approaching evil. Small, but fast and zealous, Lantern Archons make excellent support troops in celestial armies, swarming over weak opponents or teleporting in mass to flanking positions or to cut off reinforcements or escape routes. These miniature Archons work well together and know that their great strength is in numbers, uniting at times of needs and desperations to form gestalts with greater control over their surroundings. Especially brave Lantern Archons may eventually be promoted to a more powerful kind of Archon, but most are content with their current status. Trumpet Archon Lithe and beautiful with the skin of coloured marble, these beings hover upon powerful white wings that radiate a sense of serenity. Messengers of good deities and mighty celestials, Trumpet Archons serve as the vanguard of divine armies and rally the legions of the heavens to war. When lawful good deities have the need to communicate directly with a group of mortals, they often send Trumpet Archons to act as their intermediaries. Trumpet Archons speak with a clear, musical voice. Their otherworldly eyes are white and pupilless. All Trumpet Archons carry a gleaming magical trumpet or a horn which they create wondrous music with. They can also use it to sound calls to other Archons, paralyze enemies, or defend the virtuous. They typically adorn their trumpet with the emblem of their liege. Exinder Archon 
This massive humanoid figure has no mouth and carries a burning sword that matches its flaming wings. Exinders are heaven senses, scouring the plains for texts containing information too evil or dangerous to be allowed to exist. Exinders care little for individual lives or everyday heresies, remaining staunchly focused on protecting mortal kind as a whole from corruption. Exinders also have the power to wipe the memories of those who have profane knowledge and are excellent inquisitors to root out corruption. Most Exinders have strong personalities and tastes, which they will calmly and politely inform you of before removing anything they deem heretical. Check the description of this video to find some stat blocks for these unique monsters for your next 5th edition game.